We're now going to move on to our final keynote of the morning and our final keynote of this year's Apache Con. Our next speaker is Jean Morlino, and Merlino, and he is uh, the CTO and co-founder of Imply. He's also the PMC chair of the Apache Druid project. So welcome, and uh, I will uh, I'll get out of your way here. All right, hey, cool, great. Um, let me share my screen. All right. And here we go. Uh, Very good. I can see it. I assume you can too. Great. Um, All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for the intro. Thanks for the opportunity to, to speak here um, twice. I really enjoyed speaking on Tuesday, uh, kind of in depth technically about the the project that that I spend most of my time on, Apache Druid. Um, and today, at least, talking a little bit more high level about um, you know Apache. Apache projects have done a lot of great work in the data space over the last uh, couple decades. And I wanted to talk about sort of a way that, that at least in the Druid world, um, and, and, and from what I can see, how we've been thinking about how data architecture has evolved and what part Apache has to play in that, um, and what part Apache projects play in that. So um, let's, uh, let's chat about that. Uh, and the title of the talk is The Heat is On, um, meant to be evoking the fact that uh, the theme, I think, of the first wave of, of big data work was just about getting things to work at all, getting things to scale. Um, now, uh, all the focus is on getting things to be lightning fast. So how do we think about that and how do we do that? So who am I? Um, uh, I'm Gian Merlino. Uh, like Rich mentioned, I'm a committer and PMC chair at Apache Druid. And I'm also co-founder of Imply, uh, which is a company that uh, is built around Apache Druid and where we spend a lot of time and effort contributing to Apache Druid. Um, and a uh, little plug, if you're interested in, in getting paid to work on uh, projects like Druid, then uh, give me a chat afterwards. Um, so agenda, we'll talk about today, strolling down memory lane um, looking at some of the, the work that's been done over the past 15 years or so in the in data architectures and where we might go from here. And then this idea, can we have it all? Uh, in, in the ASF alone, we've got um, dozens of data projects uh, filling all kinds of different niches. Um, and uh, I've, I've got some thoughts uh, on why there's so many and um, how things might look in the future. Okay, so first off, strolling down memory lane and disk lane and network lane, we're going to be talking about uh, hardware and architecture and how they evolve together. So in the good old days, uh, before big data, um, your analytics architecture, you didn't really have one. You had a relational database that you put all your stuff in, whether whatever related to your business, whether it was your, your shopping carts or your uh, information from your point of sale system or what have you. You put that in your relational database and you do analytical and transactional queries on the same database. Um, this works fine uh, for small data sets and relatively modest analytics needs. It's, uh, and it's, it's where a lot of people start and where the industry started. Um, pretty soon people realized that doing all of your analytical queries out of the same database that you're running your business on is not a great idea. And so it makes sense to separate your analytical architecture from the system that runs your business. Uh, and so that's where the data warehouse concept comes from. Um, that's, this is one of the oldest uh, analytical architectures. And the first ones were just single machines. Um, later data warehouses, uh, especially in the I guess sort of mid to late 90s, started becoming scale out and clustered. Um, and you have some ETL process, as they call it, extract, transform, load, to get data out of the database that runs your business and into the database that you're going to use for analyzing your business. Um, a lot of this stuff is still based around single machine installation. So you're going to have one machine running your um, transactional database, one machine running your data warehouse, and, and maybe a third machine running your transformations. Um, these data warehouses, uh, being single machines, uh, being single bottlenecks, uh, tends to 
um, they tended to have scaling issues. People would start getting bigger and bigger warehouses, trying to fit as many processors as they can, as much memory and disk as they can in that machine. Um, and uh, for the purpose of doing a wide variety of workloads on them, people would do reporting workloads, people would do online workloads. Um, and what started being popular uh, after some additional time is having a, a third database, your online analytical database, your OLAP database, that's what OLA stands for. Um, and your online analytical database is something that is geared towards a more narrow range of use cases in your warehouse. Your warehouse to sort of do anything analytical. Your online analytical database will do the online stuff, will do stuff that needs to be interactive, needs to be super high speed. And for this, we're targeting uh, really high performance stuff. Um, we might store a subset of the data. Uh, we might store a summarized version of the data. You know, we'll do whatever tricks we need to do to get that performance. Um, and so that enables uh, not just ability to do analytics, but it enables the ability to do it really rapidly, which is great. Um, these are still sort of the single machine world. Uh, we keep moving on in the evolution. This is the big data world. And the big data world changes everything. Um, now we don't have data warehouses anymore. We don't have OLAP databases anymore. Uh, what we have is we have a bunch of data sources that are all sharded out. Everything is multi-machine now. Um, we're using technologies like, uh, like Kafka and Airflow to uh, get data moving from place to place. Um, one of the places they're going to live in is a data lake. Uh, it might be one based on HDFS, uh, another Apache project. Um, that's going to be a pure storage. There's not going to be any computation happening there. Um, and then you have a query engine that queries stuff from the data lake. That might be something like Hive, uh, or maybe like uh, MapReduce. Um, and the idea here is that we've sort of split stuff into uh, different kinds of components. Instead of having uh, a warehouse and an OLAP database, we have a lake that does storage, and we have a query engine that does querying, and each one can scale out. Um, each one can scale out to as much storage as you want, as much query capabilities as you want. Um, and then each of these arrows is also scale out uh, data movement arrows. Um, of course, uh, everything that has happened in the past is destined to happen again. Um, and then people started adding serving databases to this. Uh, people are not necessarily running uh, interactive analytical applications on top of Apache Hive. What they would might be doing is they might run them on top of uh, uh, HBase or Cassandra, uh, where a couple of the early choices people use there. Um, and those are databases that, while not being as uh, maybe not being as uh, capable as something like Hive in terms of, of query functionality and power, are able to serve things much more quickly and are able to store more optimized copies. Um, the database that I work on, Druid, is, is in that category, in that category of serving database. Uh, and so you sort of think of this as like an online, your online database. You have a query engine that might run using, uh, might run in Yarn, might run using some sort of elastic infrastructure, um, might spin it up and spin it down. And then you have an online database that's more likely to be continuously running um, and is going to be used for these really low latency, um, these low latency online use cases, the equivalent of the OLAP databases of your. And that's, like I said, that's the, the category that, um, that the project I work on Apache Druid is in. Um, and we sort of have now have, we've sort of now come to, to today. This is a, a picture of a lot of people's data stacks internally. You have a bunch of federated data sources. You're moving data around with a bunch of big data technologies. You're storing a lot of stuff in the lake, querying it with query engines. And then you're also going to have some collection of online databases that are serving your online use cases that need to be uh, always available and need to be really low latency. Um, so these are some. Uh, why do we do that? Why do we separate? Uh, why do we separate query engines from online databases? The reason is performance. So uh, these are some third-party benchmarks. You know, never trust the benchmarks done by the project itself. So these are there's some third-party ones. Um, Apache Druid versus Hive and Apache Druid versus Presto. Uh, and we see pretty big speed ups. We see speed ups in the, tri the double, triple digit range. Um, and so this is, this is what motivates people to use these online databases and these serving databases for applications that need to have really low latency. Um, but why not, why use both? Why don't you use something like, why aren't you using something like Druid or HBase or Cassandra for everything, these things that people use for serving databases? Um, and the reason is usually cost. 
uh, or query power. So traditionally, a lot of these uh, a lot of these databases designed for serving um, don't always have the full uh, I would say expressibility and power of something designed as an offline query engine um, or something designed as a, as a query engine, and also cost. These query engines are, you know, I mentioned earlier that you can run them on Yarn. You can sort of scale them up and scale them down with queries, spin up resources to do a query, spin them down when the query is done. Um, and these online databases are designed to be on all the time. Um, and so they're best for, they're best used for applications that uh, actually need to be available 24 7 and actually have highly concurrent usage all the time. Otherwise, you're likely to pay for resources that you're not actually using. Uh, and so that's why both of them have a place in the world. But can we have it all? Uh, so this is this is the part where I want to talk about the future. Can we have it all? Can we imagine a world where um, we actually don't need to split things into into query engines and serving databases, and where we can can we build a system um, uh, that can actually handle both of these things? So to answer that, uh, or to think about that, um, I don't necessarily have an answer for you, but I have uh, some things to think about. Um, Let's look at some of the differences between the systems. So on the query engine side, um, we have data. And remember, this is things like Hive and Presto. We're fetching data on demand. Um, they're elastic. They're fault tolerant. They're shared nothing. Um, on the serving database side, things like Druid, uh, we have those same properties. Um, we're loading data uh, from batch. We're loading data in streaming. Um, the one important difference is that instead of fetching data ahead of time, oh, sorry, instead of fetching data on demand, we're fetching data ahead of time, partitioning it and indexing it, uh, and then keeping it available on those servers at all times. And that ahead of time fetch versus on demand fetch is a big difference. Um, some other differences uh, on the query engine side, the, we're supporting federated data sources. So we're going to be query data that lives somewhere else. On the database side, on the, the serving database side, we actually are a database. We're going to be storing data within ourselves. Um, there's uh, on the query engine side, spot elasticity is something that is really cool. It's that's the ability to um, scale up and scale down really rapidly. Uh, and on the serving database side, you're going to get better performance on the same hardware um, by actually designing the query engine and data engine. Uh, to work really closely together, the data format and core engine to work really closely together, um, you get better performance than is possible with, with a query engine plus a data lake. That's that's where we get these double, triple digit speedups from. Um, you also get a lower performance floor by having everything all stored together. Um, it, you get to actually use the, the whole uh, buffalo, so to speak, of the server. You get to use memory and disk and network uh, at, to the fullest, as opposed to the query engines, which mostly focus on um, they mostly focus on network. They mostly focus on retrieving data remotely. Um, so when we dig into these differences, they they actually don't look they don't look that huge. They look like you know it looks like their differences are things like are we fetching data ahead of time or are we fetching data on demand? Um, are we storing data locally or are we querying it remotely? Do we allow external tables or do we uh, do all tables require data in our own format? Um, and you can, uh, this, this little diagram I have here is a diagram of how Druid works internally. Internally, Druid actually does use a data lake for storage. Um, uh, it just doesn't query it directly. Uh, and so you can imagine, um, you can imagine what if instead of pulling data from deep storage locally and then querying it, what if we queried it directly out of deep storage? We wouldn't be able to use as many indexes because we wouldn't have the ability to do random access uh, over the network. We need to focus on sequential scans. Um, but uh, that would enable better spot elasticity. And on the flip side, what if something, what if one of these query engines uh, decided to aggressively cache data locally? Um, and on the flip side again, what if Jira decided to add support for external tables? Um, so it's, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that, that these things to me don't seem too fundamentally different. It seems like uh, a natural evolution towards the future is uh, a system that's actually able to to satisfy both of these kinds of workloads um, and maybe simplify the big data architecture a little bit. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited about working, um, I, I guess, in the Apache ecosystem and on, on Apache Druid specifically, because I think that these sorts of these sorts of communities are really are really great ways to explore these ideas. And um, I. Uh, a lot of great software has come out in the past with these efforts, and I think there's a lot of great software that's that's due to come out in the future. 
Um, so with that, uh, thank you for coming. And um, hopefully I left you with something to think about. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to speak with us today. And uh, thank you and everyone for attending.